My noble lords, I declare my interests as set out in the register, particularly that I am the CEO of Muslim Women's Network UK and is one of the charities that did respond to the government consultations on this bill. And I thank my noble lord uh, uh, Bellamy for outlining the key points in the bill. However, many gaps remain. I welcome the bill and I hope that the gaps can be addressed. I will try and point out a few. The bill does not adequately protect children and I look forward to hearing what um, Noble Lady Baroness Benjamin has to say about this later. The definition of victim in Clause 1 needs to be expanded further to include children who have been forced and coerced into criminal activity. A statutory definition of child criminal exploitation must also be introduced as recommended by several children's charities such as the NSPCC, Bernardo's and the Children's Society. It would prevent statutory agencies from only regarding these children as perpetrators only. Many child victims of abuse and exploitation go unsupported because they are not able to access specific services to meet their needs in their locality. The Bill must place a duty on commissioners to commission sufficient specialist child-specific support and advocacy services to ensure that all child victims are supported no matter where they are in the country. Also, Clause 15, which focuses on creating guidance for independent sexual violence advisers and independent domestic violence advisers for adults, must go further and create guidance for child ISVAs and child IDVAs. I know the guidance does mention service provision for children, but having child ISVAs and child IDVAs would strengthen protection for them. I note that Clause 15 does not mention when the guidance would be reviewed. It would be helpful to add a time frame to ensure that the guidance is kept up to date. I welcome Clause 16, which restrict, restricts parental responsibility when one parent kills another. However, my Lords, to further safeguard children, parents who have been convicted of committing serious sexual offences against their children or other children in their households should also automatically lose parental responsibility. The automatic parental right of men who have fathered a child through rape should also be removed. This is especially important given that anyone born as a result of rape are now being recognised as victims in their own right in Clause 1 of the Bill. Parents should not have to spend thousands of pounds to protect their children by going through courts. And how about those parents who don't, do not have the resource to do that? I also want to ask, how will the needs of children be incorporated into the Victims' Code? Does my noble Lord the Minister agree that the Secretary of State should also be required to provide a Victims' Code um, specifically designed for children as recommended by the Children's Commissioner. Staying on the topic of Victims' Code, it will only be effective if all professionals receive the same level of training and there is accountability. These issues have already been mentioned in depth by Noble Lady Baroness Brinton. Clause 6 only mentions awareness raising to service users and the public. It is silent on training of professionals who will be tasked with delivering this code of practice. There is also no punishment for failing to act in accordance uh, with the code. The power to punish for non-compliance, even if it was to be discretionary, would give victims more trust and confidence in the criminal justice system. My Lords, I think we would all agree that the trust and confidence in the criminal justice system is an, an all-time low at the moment. My Lords, the Bill states that the Code can be revised from time to time. However, to ensure this review is not delayed, I recommend that we put in a time frame such as three to five years. The Bill does not adequate, adequately protect adults either. Stalking is poorly understood. Police forces are failing to deal with stalking, even though we have stalking legislation. Independent stalking advocates should therefore be included in Clause 15. It would help to save lives. All victims of violence, no matter what their background, should have equal access to services. 
We must therefore have a firewall to stop statutory agencies <coughs> reporting migrant victims of domestic abuse to immigration enforcement when they try and seek support and help. We must therefore expand the destitu destitution domestic violence concession model to ensure that migrant victims of domestic abuse get the financial support that they need regardless of their immigration status. We must therefore have ring fence funding for specialist services, both at a local level and a national level. And this funding has to be accessible. The current fund funding model means that smaller specialists by and for organisations do not often meet the thresholds of income that the government tends to set, which prevents them from applying for funding. Finally, I want to uh, address the right to contest decisions, which is a fundamental pillar of justice. I note that Clause 2, Section 3D, mentions that a victim should be able to challenge decisions that have a direct impact on them. However, the Bill does not mention anywhere the victim's right to review. For my noble lords, who are not familiar with the victim's right to review, I want to just briefly explain its status and the gaps. A victim of crime has the right to seek a review of a CPS decision not to prosecute. The right was established by Article 11 of the European Union Directive 2012-29. At present, the EU Directive is still law for us because of some of the EU legislation that we have retained. However, the legislation contains a significant gap for victims who are subjected to crime by multiple perpetrators such as gang rape or child uh, victim, uh, child sexual exploitation victims. At present, the victim's right to review only works if there is a single perpetrator. In cases where there are multiple perpetrators and only one or some of them are charged, say for rape, and others are not, then victims do not have the right to ask for a review on why other perpetrators have not been prosecuted which has resulted in many victims then dropping cases and then perpetrators not then being brought to justice. This bill now provides an opportunity to address this gap. Does the Noble Lord, uh, the Minister, agree that the un about the unfairness of the current victim's right to review? And would he consider strengthening it in the bill or in the victim's code of practice? My Lords, this bill presents a significant chance to enhance, enhance safeguardings for victims and guarantee a response that meets their <coughs> needs. I urge the Government to do all it can to make this a reality and address all the gaps. <coughs>